All right, so it is week three. We're back in the kitchen. Don't get too excited though, because we're keeping it basic today. We're going back to like the OG, OG pre-workout because I actually need to be like at my strongest today. I can't afford to have like my stomach mess up or anything like that. Because I just went on Instagram, like I went to the grocery real quick and I was on my phone as I was on the way back and I seen this. So that's basically Bob hitting a PR double of 821 for two conventional deadlift. And um, honestly, I feel like it's conventional, it's getting out of hand. Um, he, sh he, he shouldn't be that strong and conventional so soon. So yeah, basically today, I had a planned double of 815 for two, but I'm gonna go 821 and move it better than Bob did, just to remind him like, you know who's the boss here and you know who's the actual like conventional hero so we go with the og mix creatine we're doing 10 grams we need the 10 grams today honestly deadlifts haven't been like great over this like training phase and um i kind of know what is like contributing to it but just in general to not make any excuses deadlifts haven't been great um one of the biggest ones though, like, and I know I said I wasn't gonna make excuses, but one of the biggest factors I feel like is um, the platform here isn't that, like it doesn't feel as like flat and stable as I would like it to be ideally. So I feel like if I lose positioning very, very easily, the greens and reds by the way, in case you guys uh, didn't know, yeah. And then just some pink salt to round it off. Not too much of that. <laughs> yeah, and uh, blend all this together. But yeah, I feel like if I lose positioning a lot here. Um... Since I've been training at home, so I don't know if the garage is perfectly level or if it's slanted a little bit but i made some minor modifications to the home gym setup which i'll obviously show you guys and uh hopefully we should have a nice clean deadlift day today we lock in <coughs> mm. that's so much easier to drink than like cayenne pepper garlic everything like that like that that just goes down smooth, to be honest. So, yeah, big deadlift double today. This is week three, so we still have another double after this. And uh, next phase, we have doubles as well. So I'll tell you guys a little bit about the plan for that. See you guys in the gym. This is the new layout that we're working with. So basically, I had the two pieces of wood, or like ply, that I had stacked on top of each other. And then I had the mat um, for deadlifts, and that was like right here. So I spread it out so that that way on these two like platforms next to each other here, I'm gonna be doing squat, bench, deadlift and have room enough for all of that. And then I have this mat right here, which is just for when I'm like move the rack forward to actually deadlift. Also I have the SPD logo up here. So it seems more of like a gym as opposed to just like a, a storage room for equipment that I happen to be lifted in. So yeah, whenever, I'm gonna deadlift like today. I would just move the rack and the bench out of the way, obviously, like so. Uh, and I'm basically gonna deadlift right here up against the wall because I feel like it is the most like aesthetic area for deadlifts with the logo and everything like that behind me. <sighs> so, yeah, here's what we're gonna pull. <laughs> the only thing I'm like mildly worried about now with deadlifting on one ply is obviously, once again, the tiles. Cause 
kind of like proved by deadlifting multiple weeks in a row that two pieces apply on a mat were more than enough to like you know stop the stop the tile from exploding but i guess we'll see today because we're going up, up above 800 and uh i'm gonna be dropping it as i normally would so we'll see One thing that I found interesting that I've seen a lot of like top lifters or just lifters in general who make rapid progress on their lifts have in common is just how like meticulous and like, I don't know, almost like anal they are with their lifts. So um, I was talking to Bob one time and we were both laughing at the fact that like a lot of times when we waking up to like a heavy top set or something like that, we would literally take warm-ups that we've done before and put them next to like other warm-ups that we've done before on like good days and like compare the speed. So it's like, if you do like 700 for a warm-up, you'd put it next to a 700 pound deadlift or a 700 pound squat that you've done before. I just compare the speed to see like, okay, well, where am I at on the day? Like, is this good in comparison to like what I've done before? And like a lot of people, one, they don't even record their stuff, but two, they're not, they, they, they're not like that meticulous with it to the point where it's like, they're playing videos side by side and they're comparing this, they're comparing that, you know? And realistically, if you want to maximize your rate of shrinking, that's how you need to be. It's genuinely how you need to be. All right, so I believe this is 618 or something like that. Um, I added on a five to the usual, like four reds to five red jump, just because we go in like above seven reds. So I don't want that to be like, you know, like a bigger, like I don't want the jump from my last warm up to my top set to be bigger than the jumps that I take in my warm up. So I don't know this five here, and then I'm also gonna add on the five kg to the warm up after this, which would usually be six reds flat. But yeah, it's gonna be six reds plus the um, five kg. And uh, that should line me up perfectly to jump straight from that to 821. Obviously, depending on how this feels and the next one feels, but that's also a lie. I'm probably gonna go for it regardless. <laughs> That felt nice and centered, didn't feel like I was rocking back and forth at all really, so that's good. Hopefully next warm up feels good and if it does, then I should be able to move top set very comfortably. Alright, my setup was kind of weird there. For some reason, I like, 
I don't know, I was just like overthinking it a little bit, but weight felt very easy. Um, much easier than like last week and stuff like that. So yeah, we going for it. I always get very, very nervous before a top set, like even in a deal load. Let's get very nervous. Not because I think I'm gonna fail, but because in my mind I always like, what if this doesn't move as fast as I want it to move? You know? That's a really like fair for me. But warm ups were good. Unlucky and bring some energy to the set. <coughs> nice double here. Back down sets gonna be at 5.95. Notice I just said 5.95, I know 40 past. <laughs> well, I mean, this is episode 18 or day 18, I think, um, of the build series. And I've been doing ascending sets on deadlifts, like purely, and then having that like drop at the end. But um, honestly, I was thinking about it and I've been doing it for the last couple of weeks, right? I genuinely think that for the sake of like efficiency in the gym and just like time management, stuff like that, it's probably worth it just to do all your sets at like a middle weight. Because I was thinking about it, like the time I would spend kind of like loading and unloading weight, like let's say I needed to go from like a blue to a red or like from a yellow to a blue or something. It's just like, a lot of like loading and unloading of weight just for the ascendance, just to get like, you know, 10, 20 pounds more. So I was thinking about the impact of that on your training versus the, um, the like time savings and just energy savings of like rocking on and rocking off weight. And I came to the conclusion that uh, although ascendance sets are great, you're probably better off <laughs> It, dep it depends, it depends, it depends. Like if you, if you just have time like that, then I guess you could do it and you could even like flip flop like week to week. But for me, I'm just probably gonna do straight sets. So I'm gonna do four sets of four with 595 here. The ascending sets were supposed to be 580, 584, 595, 606. And then a back down set of like 573 or 562 or something like that. So I'm just gonna do all four sets at 5.95, so that's like a middle weight, so I'll get pretty much the same volume and a little bit less intensity, because I'm not really hitting that like 606 range, but realistically, because my back down sets are so light, the impact of 606 versus 5.95 on my body is the same thing. Literally the same thing, you know? So yeah, that's basically, Jesus Christ. Okay, I almost died. <laughs> Try to rock back this way. But yeah, that's basically my reasoning behind no longer doing ascending sets on deadlift, at least most weeks. And uh, just simply keeping it to, to straight sets, save some time. But um, top set was good. That was 8.21 for a double. As I said, the initial plan was 8.15. Um, next week, I'm looking at 8.48 for a double. But um, considering, you know, the fact that I went up a little bit, considering everything else, I just simply, that top set was perfect. Like, it was just beautiful, honestly. Um, I think 848 should be pretty much the same next week. Um, if it is, I put up on screen, I'll actually do that right now. 782 from last week versus 821 from this week, which is literally a 39 pound jump, I believe. 
Um, yeah, the difference is minimal in terms of speed. So yeah, trust the process, trust your program. A lot of times you might be a little bit discouraged because it's like, oh, the week two didn't move that good or this didn't move that well. And uh, you'll be surprised how things could just change just like that, you know? So yeah, gonna rest up a little bit. And as I said, four sets of four here. In the middle of my rest period here, between the second to last set and the last set, and um, I had a beautiful realization, it was like yesterday into this morning, and when you hear what the realization was, you'd probably be like, why did you describe that as beautiful? But the realization was basically that nobody cares. <laughs> like genuinely, nobody cares, bro. And what I mean by that is like a few videos ago, I had a, a SPD session, right? And halfway through the SPD session, I basically like stopped talking and I just kind of like dragged through the workout and then I like spoke to you guys at the end of the workout, right? And uh, I was basically saying that like, you know, with Sheffield coming up and everything like that, that, um, you know, it was kind of like demotivating and everything like that. And um, I'm very happy that I shared that, but thinking about it, like, no, is like, nobody really cares. Like, all you guys want to see me do is get stronger, come back to the IPF next year, and destroy everybody, right? That's, that's basically what you want to see me do. Maybe some people watching this like, don't like me and you don't wanna see me do that, you wanna see me go and fail, but um, that's basically what you want to see me do. And the reason why it's a beautiful realization that nobody cares is because it literally gives you only one option and that option is to keep working regardless of like how you feel or any kind of like emotion or anything like that you know so it's like I, the reason why it is i was like i saw that bob video and i was like all right let me step on the gas here a little bit and like you know like add some oomph to this instead of just going through the emotion going through the emotions is because i was thinking about the reality of like me wallowing in like Oh well, you know, and I'm motivated and everybody else is competing and everybody else is getting better and everything like that. And it's like, I would get to a point, at some point next year, maybe it's Wills or something like that, I would be at a high level meet and I wouldn't be where I could have been if I just simply kept working as hard as I did when I had a competition coming up in like three, four months. You know what I mean? And it's like, that struck some kind of like fear into me. Like, what if I lose? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, I don't think you guys understand like how much I put into the like sport of polo, how much I put into my training and everything like that. Like how much this, this whole thing just means to me. You know what I mean? Like, what if I lose? I would look back at those times when it is I like dragged through a workout and I didn't really hit the weight I was supposed to hit and everything like that. And I wasn't on top of my diet and everything. And I would be like, you bitch. <laughs> And, you know, I guess, sorry for using that word, I don't really curse in these videos. I know my parents watch these sometimes. But I'll be like, you bitch. You really, really didn't lock in. You actually didn't lock in when you could have. You had no point. You didn't have a competition coming up. You could have just locked in, 
stay training off season and building, getting better than everybody else, staying ahead of the pack. And you didn't do that. You know what I mean? And it's like, when I say these things, right, it's not just about training. Maybe you're a powerlifter and maybe that applies to you, but that's about life. It's like nobody cares if you achieve your goals or not. Nobody cares. You know what I mean? Like, if it is you want to make like a certain amount of money, you want to have a certain physique, you want to do this or what, the only person that cares, real, like at the end of the day, is you, bro. And it's like, you got to make it happen. People only care about the results. And that is a beautiful realization because it means you can just simply keep working. That's it. So, if you're not locked in and you're watching this video, Lock in, bro. Lock in. I just have like a, a newfound, like, ugh. I mean, I'm super excited for next week because I have my heaviest bench, heaviest squat, heaviest deadlift, and uh, yeah, I have a, a lot of like work that I want to put. I'm just excited to work, bro. So yeah, let me hit this last set and then we have some squats. We have variation squats today as well. So I'm gonna convert the garage gym back into squat mode. So that basically means just simply moving the rack from here to here and uh, putting the barbell up, which should be simple enough. By the way, I still actually like park in here. So that's why like I try to have everything laid out like as a, methodically as possible so that it's easy just to like put everything to the side and I could come in and park here, drive for all of this and be fine. Uh. So, uh. simple enough. Boom, put this up. Put the bar up. And just like that, we went from deadlift mode, and I can actually still deadlift here while this is here, but it's just, it won't be like as aesthetic for like um, Instagram or YouTube videos. And we all know that that's the most important part of our workout. Everything else, like actual lift, actually lifting weights and stuff like that, it's not that important, to be honest. Here's a massive like thing that I rediscovered is the word I would use in my training recently, right? Um, I was looking at like some of like Perk's videos and then also Jesus's videos as well. And um, one of the things I noticed that I stopped doing that they seem to do, I don't know if they do it on purpose or not, is they try very hard. And that might sound like extremely counterintuitive, but they just simply put a lot of like effort into it and uh, yeah just like every single rep regardless of how like submaximal it is they just simply put a lot of like effort into it and it's a weird thing and like as i warm up i'll kind of like explain what i mean by that but i'm gonna do two reps here well i'm gonna do more than two reps because i'm warming up but the first two reps here i'll show you what i mean so the first one i'm gonna basically I'm gonna squat it, it'll probably be fast because it's one red, but I'm not gonna put that much like effort into it, right? And these are like paused warm-ups as well. Right? So that was fast. This one is me putting oomph and effort into it. Right? I don't know if you can notice the difference here. I'm gonna put effort into it again. So I kind of like explain the bro science, the benefits of that to you as I warm up because I don't know what the actual benefits are, but I found that like since I started doing that at the start of this block, my training has just been like going really well. 
if I had to guess what the benefits are of that, of giving 100% effort to every single rep, um, I would think that one, you're sort of like training your body how to like recruit all your muscle fibers or most of your muscle fibers at once, as opposed to only training that skill when you go heavier. So if it is I'm like moving this weight, you know, decent RP, you know, it's just kind of like moving, then it's like, yeah, my body is recruiting muscle fibers, but maybe it's not necessarily using all the muscle fibers and it's not necessarily like switching everything on in that instance. You know, powerlifting should be explosive and usually the best lifters are explosive lifters. You know what I mean? Um, you have a few lifters who lift like slowly, but realistically they're not, you know, they're good, but they may be not like crazy good. And then the next thing I think is that I actually think that it reduces fatigue because it reduces your time under tension. So for example, if I squat this weight here and uh, in total I do um, five reps and uh, each rep takes like a second, right? Then in total, the time under tension that I have there is five seconds, right? So that is a certain amount of like muscular and nervous system fatigue, right? If I squat this, right, and I squat it in half the time because I'm just bam, I like I'm putting in all that effort, while I am recruiting more um, muscle fibers, I could cut the time on the tension in half, and I think that does better for you in terms of like the volume you're able to handle, different things like that. The only downside is that as the weight gets heavier and you're simply not able to move it as fast, that could have a negative impact on like technique and stuff like that by trying to move it as fast as possible. But I think the pros kind of like outweigh the cons. So again, I'm gonna do four reps here. The first two reps, I'm just gonna kind of like do them. And then the second two reps, I'm gonna like put some, you know, like gas behind it. So those two were like fast, right? Nothing crazy, anything like that. These two I'm gonna put like, I'm gonna actually do what I like do recently. So you can see the difference there. I was treating the two reds like if it was freaking, you know, like a, like a top set, you know, and that cuts on the time on attention. It gets me into the feeling of like, okay, this is what I have to be doing when I get to heavier weight. And it feels good, bro. Top set here with 463 pounds, which I believe is 210 keys, is it? Yeah, probably. Um, and then we have some like light back downs. The only thing with like putting maximal effort into every single rep is that like on higher rep sets, especially pause work like this, sets of six, um, you do get like fatigue, like you feel winded but it's more so like cardiovascularly than anything else. It's not like you're muscularly fatigued or anything. But um, yeah, see how well we can make this move. This will just kind of like prime me and set me up nicely for my main squat top set of the block, biggest squat top set of the block next week, which wouldn't be a PR or anything, but mid 700s for a triple should be, uh, should be good.
If you guys have watched any of my main deadlift day videos, you guys know the accessories that we have on this day. It's just simply two of them. The first one is this, which is contralateral split squat iso holds. So I simply just hold this position on the load for time, and I'm doing 30 seconds right now. I have a timer going on my watch. And then I used to do reverse hypers on this day, but now I consistently do good mornings just because not every week I'm at the studio where you know I have access to the reverse hyper. And this is much harder than it seems, literally trembling right now. But that's 30 seconds. <laughs> so yeah, just that 30 second thing, like a lot of people think, oh well it's easy and it's not gonna do much. If you have like knee pain, try it. Like generally try it. Like I added that one set per side once a week and uh, it makes the, the world a difference. All right, it's like evening time right now. So we're like 4.30. So the sun is like straight up just beaming in here right now. So even though it's not as like hot, because I'm getting like direct sunlight, it feels a lot more hot. But these good mornings must be done. And uh, basically with these, the two differences that I make from my squat setup, is one, I go below where I would go on low bar. And then two, I take like a wider stance. And that helps me feel it a lot in the back, glutes and hamstrings. This is actually a pretty good exercise. If you don't have access to a reverse hyper, definitely recommend it. But if you do, then obviously I'd recommend the reverse hyper. All right, so to wrap up my lower body workouts, I recently started like adding back in core. I have not done core, like before this training phase, I haven't done core for like two years. Like I haven't done any sort of like core or ab work. And um, it was just something that kind of like faded out of my training. Um, and I really don't know why. So I don't do anything too crazy. Um, I'm basically just gonna be plank in here for a minute. So I would do probably like three to five rounds of this. And then I'd also just go straight into some um, like side planks as well. But yeah, I don't know why I stopped like doing core. It makes a pretty big difference in terms of like how well my lower back recovers. And then also just how like I feel when I like brace on the squat and the deadlift. And um, yeah, I feel like if my squat and deadlift are finally coming back around ever since I added this back in. So yeah, I have 20 seconds again here and then I'll show you guys the side planks. And then these are the side planks. I don't do these for a minute each side. I do these for 30 seconds each side. And um, yeah, these are nothing crazy, just up on one side. And I like to hold my arm up like that some reason it provides like better stability just in general and i'm up on like the side 
bottom-ish of like my foot and I can really feel these in the obliques on the bottom side here which is the left side and having not done these for two years you can imagine how hard these are because like a lot of people said say that you get core work from like squat and deadlift naturally which is probably true but uh, I think direct core work is valuable from like a aesthetic standpoint and then also from a functional standpoint as well because as I said my um, my squat and deadlift feel great so I'll finish up the next side here and I'll show you guys what we're having for dinner all right so dinner time I'm gonna rub these off before showing you guys but uh, we have these three ribeye steaks I am not going to eat all of these tonight you might think that I might eat all of these tonight but one I'm not Jeff Bezos and two <laughs> I don't eat all that like protein uh, in one night but I'm gonna be cooking all three of these um, this is the first time I'm gonna be like actually meal prepping steak for like a couple of days in advance I've never done that usually I like to cook steaks fresh so I'll report back to you guys on that in the next video just to see how like meal prepped steaks taste when they're like two or like three days old yeah <laughs> so yeah uh, right now I'm gonna drink some protein um, got like 50 grams of protein there and then I'll just have these steaks with like some rice and um, veggies and yeah that's pretty much it today was a very very successful training day um, it was kind of like a confidence booster for me and kind of like what I needed going into the week four here so yeah I'm gonna shower drink a protein and then cook and I will catch you guys in the next video. Peace.